Each week, American Artifacts takes viewers into archives, museums, and historic sites around the country. The USS Constitution was launched in Boston in 1797 and named by President George Washington for the Constitution of the United States. The ship gained fame during the War of 1812, defeating British warships in three sea battles and earning the nickname Old Ironsides. American History TV visited the USS Constitution Museum in Boston, located at the same pier where the ship is docked today. The museum's president, Anne Grimes Rand, gave us a tour of some of the museum's exhibits and artifacts, which trace the history of the ship from its construction to its role in the War of 1812 to the present day. Constitution had an exciting escape from the British in July of 1812, and this painting shows that. Constitution was sailing up to the New York coast, up to New York from Chesapeake Bay, and she saw five ships on the horizon, and she thought it was the American squadron that she was supposed to meet. It was sunset, so she sailed up toward them, and you would have private signals of the day to signal an American ship. At night, you would use a series of lights. So Constitution made the light signals, but she didn't get the proper signals back from the other ships. So instead of sailing directly toward them, she sailed off the coast, and in the morning, it became apparent that it was a British squadron who was sailing to New York to meet the Americans instead of the Americans Constitution wanted to meet. So now Constitution was facing five British ships. She tried to outsail them, but it was a very light air day. You can see that in addition to her normal sails in the painting here off to the side, are additional sails called stunsels, so you could add even extra canvas to try to escape from the British. So the British did the same. They set all their canvas. They tried launching the rowboats, rowing to tow Constitution away from the British, and the British did the same. In fact, they concentrated all of their rowboats on the ship closest to Constitution. So finally, Lieutenant Charles Morris, the first lieutenant on Constitution, suggested kedging. They were off the coast of New Jersey, which is a gradual, sandy, shallow coast. So they were able to row, send a small boat ahead of Constitution and drop the anchor. And then the men at the capstan would push the capstan bars, which is like a giant human powered pulley that would haul Constitution up to the anchor while other men rowed another anchor forward. So by kedging, they could move the ship when there was no wind to try and stay ahead of the British. This was two days of chase with light air, a puff now and then, and fortunately, when the breeze finally filled, it reached Constitution first. So she set all sails, scooted away in the storm before it reached the British. So war was declared against Great Britain on June 18, 1812. In July of 1812, Constitution had the great escape from the British. So August 19, 1812, she was still afloat, and she was the first to meet one of those five ships pursuing her, the Guerriere, was now alone and headed to Halifax for repairs. So Constitution met Guerriere on August 19, 1812, and we have put together a diagram from Captain Hull to help you understand how that battle went. So Constitution met Guerriere at 345. Constitution is here. She's clearing for action. You can see that they're getting ready for battle. They shorten the sails. They, the men go to their guns. They get the shot and the powder all ready. They're preparing. At 4.45, Guerrier is sailing back and forth, waiting for Constitution to approach. And it isn't until the two ships get very close together that Captain Hull begins to fire. Guerrier sent shots to test the range. But right here, by 6.20, when the two ships came alongside, they're firing broadside to broadside. All the guns come out the side of the ship and are firing at each other. And Hull reports in less than 15 minutes from the time we got alongside, his mizzenmast went by the board. That's the last mast of Guerriere. You can see it falling into the water here. So Guerriere has lost one of her three masts, and now it's dragging in the water, sort of like a sea anchor. So we think Captain Hull thought, I can cross the T. That means all of his guns would bear on Guerriere when none of hers would be pointing at Constitution. So at 6.30, he tries to cross as the two ships cross, they actually collide. And here's an image that Isaac Hull commissioned of the battle, which we've enlarged in our exhibit here. So this is the moment when the two ships are together that the boarders tried to cross. The first lieutenant of the Marines, William Bush, climbed onto the taffrail and asked the captain, shall I board her, sir? 
At that moment, he actually is shot by a sharpshooter. In the rigging of the British ships, they would have Marines firing at the enemy deck. So he fell to the deck. He's the first Marine officer to die in combat in the War of 1812. Our first lieutenant, Charles Morris, then goes to lead the boarding party. He is also shot and wounded. And finally, the two ships pull apart. As the two ships pull apart, the rigging is tangled and Guerriere loses her last two masts. So when you look at the final image here, she's left a perfect wreck in the water. She has no more ability to maneuver with no masts and sails. She has to surrender by firing a gun away from Constitution, the signal that the battle is over. So Constitution has just beaten a British frigate. Britain has been queen of the seas. As long as anyone can remember, Britain always wins sea battles. But here, USS Constitution fought the battle and they saw cannonballs bounce off of her side. And the sailor cried, huzzah, her sides are made of iron, which of course was a joke. She's a fully wooden ship, but she earned the nickname Old Ironsides in this battle. You can watch this or other American Artifacts programs at any time by visiting our website, cspan.org slash history. And watch American Artifacts every Sunday at 8 a.m., 7 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern on C-SPAN 3.